Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Isaiah 43, verse 1. I want to read verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, But now, thus saith the Lord who created you. O Jacob, you can put your name there. And he formed you, O Israel. The first thing he says to you is, fear not. I don't know who you are in the service. Like that woman, I don't know which campus she was. She saw a growth. And the first thing that grabbed her soul was fear. In the name of Jesus, let every fear be paralyzed. Let every fear be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus. For I have redeemed you. I bought you back. I, I snatched you. <laughs> I have called you by your name. You are mine. And also some people, I am the Lord. I belong to Jesus. And also some people, I belong to Jesus. I'm not a meat for their teeth. I belong to Jesus. I'm not a candidate for sacrifice. I belong to Jesus. I'm not a recommendation for poverty. I belong to Jesus. Verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters. Announce to people, tell them it's a passing through. <laughs> the next time you see me, I will have a testimony. It's a passing through. That says I will be with you. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. He didn't say I walk through the valley of death. Shadow. The reason why I saw shadow was because he was near. He couldn't come near because of the person with me. And through the rivers, first level, water. If you don't have Jesus, you go through the river. Bible says, for she shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt. I pray in the name of Jesus, you shall not be burnt. I say, you shall not be burnt. Nor shall flames scorch you. By the time this is over, you will not even smell of fire. Can I have a sevenfold amen, somebody? The Lord will keep you. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus. This is the year where your testimony will be announced. Pray in tongues if you believe it. Come on, pray in tongues. If you know that this is the year, pray. Like your life depends on it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Why don't you give thanks to the Lord? Oh, do I ain't not so be you. Oh, Worship Thank you. 
Somebody. Hey, Larry. Hey, One more time. Tell me. There is no one else like you. Hey, let's all be you. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, do what only you could have done. Let every ear that have heard the testimony, every eyes that have seen what you did, let them not be put ashamed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a hand, somebody. Hallelujah. Be seated. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 2.14 Thanks be to God. What does he do? Who always, not sometimes, leads us. So what God is leading you to do, triumph is at the end of the tunnel. He leads us in triumph in Christ. Please know this. You don't triumph if nothing came against you. We overcame. We know we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of His testimony. But something came at us. We went over it. I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll be over that thing you're going through. I want you to know before we go a long way that God has not called you to defeat. It's not your prayer. It's not your fasting that reminded God of victory. Oh, I should give my daughter victory. I should give my son victory. God called you to victory. From the very start, he called you to victory. He called you to glory and to virtue. In 2 Chronicles 16.9, the Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro. <laughs> it runs through and fro throughout the whole earth. So it's not an African gospel I'm preaching to you. Is a global one. The eyes of the Lord runs to and fro. Why? To show himself strong on behalf, not everybody, those whose hearts are loyal to him. Those whose hearts are loyal to him. Not everybody that goes to church. Whose hearts are loyal? In other words, God is thinking, looking. Who can I show myself strong on their behalf? Who can I flex my muscle for? <laughs> that thing that came at you, God wants to use you as a testimony to show people around you what he could do. His eyes is running to and fro to show himself strong. But the problem is many people who call upon God their lips are close to God, but their hearts are far from God. Their hearts are not loyal. You can imagine God running to and fro, his eyes, looking for you, somebody that he could show himself strong. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, together we tear that evil prophecy, that medical prophecy, in the name of Jesus. So I want you to know that God is not reluctant, that we have to beg him before he gives us a testimony. No, he wants, he's more eager to show people what he could. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus hear the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, your Redeemer. Bible says, I am the Lord your God. 
What do I do? He teaches us to profit. He leads us the way we should go. So there's a way we should go. In our relationship, in our business, in our career. What if we don't go the way he planned we should go? Huh? We will not see the kind of profit we are to see. So when God meets you, he may not tell you verbatim, but what he does is that he tells you, follow me. Follow my leading. Because I want to make you. I called you to victory. I called you to glory and virtue. I am looking. Don't think you are the one praying, Lord, anoint me. Lord, use me. I'm looking for someone to use. He set me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Listen, I want people to know what I could do. So I'm looking for somebody. You think you are eager to be anointed? You are eager to be used? God is more eager to use somebody. But many times he can't find. But know this, 2 Timothy 31. In the last days, prayer lost time shall come. Verse 2 says, men shall be lovers of themselves, self-love. Before they do anything, they're asking, what do I stand to gain? If you get married now and you experience true love from anybody, <laughs> I wouldn't say you're lucky. <laughs> because right now, even men are asking, what will you put on the table? I don't know about other people in the days we got married. Nobody was thinking about that. You got married to, to help. I knew people that built houses for their in-laws. Right now, <laughs> if you're a sister and your boyfriend is helping you, hmm, I really pray for you. If you meet a lady, all she needs to do is to be buying things for him. It will tell you, look, all my life I've, I've stayed with you. I have been my best. But this lady, she's been buying things for me. So they advised me in my family. <laughs> Men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Someone tells you, Oma, na money, money, money. I'm not born again, rich money. The spirit of the end time is speaking. Boasters, proud blasphemers, people that will look at you and blaspheme God. There are people that go to church that blaspheme God. Disobedient to parents, unthankful people. There's somebody I didn't see for like 25, 27 years, I'm not sure, but over 25 years. I normally don't pass through that gate. But I saw the person and I recognized that ah, I used to know this face. So I told the God to come in. I didn't plan. I came to church at a very odd hour. And he said to me, ah, I just came to church thinking I will see you. I said, come, come, come. Then I brought him to the lounge there. What's your problem? He told me. I went to my car. The money I had there, everything I packed it. You know what he said? Is this what you give to me? <laughs> Not seen him in over 25 years. Now, I don't remember, but I know he was well over 100,000. I didn't, he, I wasn't prepared. A pastor, a missionary. My God. <laughs> Verse 3. Ah, I love it. I'm forgiven. Slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What did they do? Uh -huh. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. The Bible says, warn to you if your king drinks wine in the morning. My God. <laughs> pleasure. I gave someone money because he, he didn't have a job. I gave the person money. I won't tell you the amount. Go and start business. Go and do something. 
You know what the person did? The person, first of all, went to go and eat in a restaurant with the money. <laughs> Poverty is no lack of money, it's a mindset. You know the amount we, we spent in starting media ministry in Koza? I came in 2002 to preach in Abuja, Easter period. Oh, my protocols, all of them worked at ECOWAS WHO. I said, God, why did you do this to me? And they were saying, yes, sir, God bless you. I preached that day with the last breath of my inside. <laughs> I preached that day. The pastor gave me an honorarium. I cursed the honorarium. I said, who betide me if I spend a dime? I traveled all the way from Abuja to learn. It was the money we used to buy equipment for our media ministry I started in, in 2002. They give you money in millions. First of all, went to a restaurant to eat. That's the day you ought to drink gari. As you are drinking that gari, you are telling yourself, ha, if I manage, surely there's an end. If you are smart, you don't need more than one opportunity. I don't know how I got here. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not remain the same. I'm the Lord, your God, that teaches you to profit. So God wants us to profit. Whatever you do, he wants you to stand out and to lead you the way you should go. Anything God is teaching you in this season, in the name of Jesus, may you come out strong. God is a teacher. Bible says, who teaches like him? Who teaches like him? Who teaches like him? Including what you're going through. Who teaches like him? Do you know the reason why I don't play with money? When I was young, my father went broke. We didn't have food that day. I don't know why I'm saying these things. That Christmas, we had to go to our hometown. If you're from Ikiti, you know that once you arrive, to eat, food to eat will be available. People will be pounding yam. You eat a pound of yam in the morning, afternoon, night. You won't be hungry. So we just thought the best thing to do was to go to our hometown. My younger brother, my younger sister. My father's friend gave us a car. But at that time, the car had a problem. Gear one did not work. Gear two did not work. <laughs> Reverse gear did not work. And the battery was not good. So in the middle of the bush, the car packed up. And we had to push the car. Remember, gear one was not working, gear two was not working. Now, I woke up in life to meet my father rich. My parents were okay. Let me put it that way. But at that time, something happened. Thankfully, before he passed, God restored him again. Okay? But I'm talking to you about 1987. I can never forget that year. Myself, my younger sister, and my brother, we jumped into the car on motion. My father just started crying. I cannot forget that picture. Something tells me, in verse, Jews don't spend their money. They spend the grandson. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This is not part of my notes. Don't be foolish. Be wise. Forget anything you are seeing. <laughs> Be wise as a child of God. You can't walk with God and not be smart. Paul says to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. When you see traffic, it's in the airport. People are planning to land. So they'll tell you to wait a while. No traffic if you fly high. Do I have any kingdom high flyer here? God wants you to fly high. That's why he's teaching you to profit. 
I know they are fowlers. They don't hunt games on, on the ground. They hunt things that fly. You'll not be hunted. Amen. I say you'll not be hunted. Amen. May you hand well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Please don't joke with the scripture. If they obey. Now, you don't get it until you read, maybe, New Living Translation, an amplified version. New Living Translation. If they listen, a lot of people, <laughs> they don't listen. If you listen and obey, you will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. You may not believe this. I believe it. And there's nothing you're doing in church if you don't believe the Bible. So we have a lot of unbelieving believers. <laughs> they don't believe the Bible. They say, no, does God really, is God really saying that? You remind me of the devil. Read Genesis 3. Read the New Living Translation. The Bible says, the devil asks, did God really? You see, the first person that said, really? that I take the word of God as it is written. Did God really, 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 really? Did you see that? Did God, underline it or put in red, did God really say? The first question was asked in the Bible by the devil. He doesn't say God didn't say that because Eve could have proven it to him that God said it. But did God really mean that you are the head and not the tail? Did he really mean that? No, he's just talking figuratively. <laughs> Somebody was arguing with me the days I was still on social media. You know the grace of God. How he became, he said, no, it's not really, really real prosperity. I said, really? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> he said, spiritual. I said, okay, so be spiritually rich. <laughs> I, <laughs> are you all still here? When you start asking such questions from your head, with heart, a man believes, not with head. Okay? Know that somebody's around. Okay? May the Lord teach you to profit. Amen. You'll be the first person to escape some things in your family. Amen. To preach the gospel will not be hard. People will say, how did you do it? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe it, shout, Amen, like fire! Everybody will claim you. They will say, ah, oh, she's my sister. Say, are you related? No, she's from three villages from mine. Uh -huh, you have started. Somebody came to my house and said, oh, Pastor Vedo, I brought somebody that grew up with you. Yeah, I came out, I said, please, I, I, I want to meet people that grew up. So I met the person. I said, you grew up with me? He said, not really, but you used to greet my brother. I said, really? <laughs> Success has many relations. And I'm not saying I'm there yet. But by the time people start claiming you, don't be angry. It's because you are near the promised land. I pray in the name of Jesus, God will change your story. I say, God will change your story. If you believe it, shout him like fire. In Hebrews 11 verse 8, Hebrews 11 verse 8, Karaba ba ba ba, by faith, Abraham obeyed. So you can obey God except by faith. You can't. But Pastor Biodun, I've been obeying God, I've been serving God. Obedience is different from doing what pays you. Sometimes you obey God and cry. And I'm not sermonizing. I'm telling you the secret to victory. You know, <laughs> when I just became a pastor, oh, I wanted to prove to people that God called me. <laughs> it's really like my friends. One of my friends, a prince. Prince of another tribe. 
very popular city in Ebo land. He saw me in Lagos. He laughed. He said, Abi, come on, get out. What's, what's wrong with you? We, we, we thought you were joking. Even as a graduate, you are still doing this thing. That day, I carried a plate to print for Koza on a bike. He told me, get out from that place. Get out. He entered, he dragged me inside to sensation on Tampa Way in the loop. He said, what's wrong with you? When he left, I felt low. I said, am I doing the right things? I'm telling you a true story. It happened to me. <laughs> so when you look at me today and judge some things, I don't care. You don't know where I started from. And I'm telling you the truth. I told somebody, the way you are right now, you are better than me when I met the Lord. If I could be like this, you can go further. As far as I, if I saw Father in life, it was because I stood on the shoulders of torment. Joseph entered Egypt with chains. His brothers or his father, they entered. They entered palace. Because I've gone ahead of you. You will not experience the things I've experienced in the name of Jesus. Why? The Bible says affliction will not rise a second time. I pray in that because you are joined. I and the children the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and one. I pray in the name of Jesus, let something new start in your life. Let the wonders of the Lord begin to happen to you. If you believe in shout three amen like fire. By faith, Abraham obeyed. Look at this. When he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, he went out not knowing where he was going. Not a young boy, an old man. He went out not knowing where he was going. <laughs> where are you going? I don't know. Who called you? I just met the God. Because he just met God. His parents were worshipping heights. That was why his name was Abraham. Father of heights, worshiping moon and stars. Just met God. So, your decision to come to church will make a difference in your life. But if you are double dating, it doesn't work. You will find out that those who didn't go to church, you'll go back and join them. They will be better than you. If you are here, be here. So that I can show that you are here. And I know one Christian, forget about them. Let's talk about you. Okay? By faith. You can't obey God without faith. So you begin to think, number one, God has called us to victory. He always leads us, including what you are dealing with. Victory is at the end of the tunnel. If you listen to him, you will come out with a testimony. Always leads us. Number two, he has called you to victory. He is not afraid to show himself. We, we are not here to twist his hands to the back. No, his eyes run to and fro. He wants to show himself strong in your finance, in your career, in your business. He wants people to meet you and say, wow. Pastor Biodo, I'm really not doing good with God. And God is blessing me. He's trying to draw you to himself. That's not the way to live. Because his goodness leads to repentance. Not to keep staying there. Okay? By faith, Abraham obeyed. So, it means what we call obedience it's really the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Not the beginning, but the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. So what we call obedience is not really, really obedience. But it's a good place to start. At least you are coming to church now. You are doing what you like, what pays you. Mm -hmm. At least out of 10, I'm doing six. But I'm talking about things you do by faith. By faith. One man showed up, knew your friend, so maybe the father of your friend, you knew in one lesson, said, I will sponsor you. 
And all your life you were saying the man was from God, help from God. But later you discovered the truth of God's word. And you began to place your faith. It takes faith to break off from that kind of comfort or security and follow God. By faith, Abraham obeyed God. This afternoon I was studying and the Holy Ghost brought Jesus to my attention. In Ephesians 2, in Philippians 2, 5, Bible says, in Philippians 2, 5, Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was the mind? In verse 6, who being the form of God? What do people brag about when they talk about grace? Oh, I'm made in his image. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There's therefore no more condemnation. We've all, we've all preached that. But I'm not teaching you to be a theoretical victor. Those things are true. But that same God has brought you close to be better, to teach you to be more like him. He didn't send Jesus here so that you can continue doing what you're doing and sin does not count. No, he wants you to be more like him. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to equal himself with God. In case he said he was God, it would not be robbery because he was already. Remember what he said on the cross, Father glorify me with the glory that I had before the world began. He had it. If he changed his mind from dying, he would have had it. But he made himself of no reputation. We are talking about obedience. When everybody thinks you are this, you, are, you don't have any reputation. But God is pleased with you. <laughs> I don't even know where to turn right now. You know, when things are going well, anybody can serve God. You say, I just thank God. Things are just... I'm talking about times when you have no reputation. Taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8. Being found in the appearance as a man. Do you know what it means to be a spirit and become a man? Being limited. You are not lying off for visa. You just go and appear somewhere. Bible says they were eating the place. Jesus was appeared and broke bread and their eyes opened. Now he needs to walk. Oh, he will walk for two days to preach for one hour. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself. You know what I found out? Humility and obedience, they are a coin of two sides. You can't obey if you're not humble. Very hard. Have you had people say, listen, I can't do what you tell me. I just, I just want what you're saying to make sense. Just appeal to my intelligence. Oh. Just explain to me. Anybody can be obedient if they have the explanation. But when God says to you, jump, and you jump, Abraham moved, not knowing what you call obedience is no obedience. You want to be anointed? You want revival to come through you? You want something? You want to strike your generation? You have to walk in obedience even in the New Testament. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. And being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of, of death. Do you know what that means? The, the, the writer puts the word even, even. He was obedient to the point. You see, read the negotiations he had at the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, take this cup. The father told him, Jesus, you have to die. I don't, there's, there are no two ways. Take this cup. The third time he said, Father, let your will be done. Oh yeah, let's go. Who do you seek for? Jesus, they fell. There was power. But he said, take me. Peter caught. Don't think Peter wanted to cut the hair. It was the head. The person dodged it. But the hair left. He put it back. He had someone that had the power to do a creative miracle. 
He could come down from that cross on his own. Just come down with the nails. Just come down. But he chose to be there. He was obedient even to the point of death. You know, when I was young, <laughs> I don't know if it happened to you. I like to go to the mechanic place. I like to fix cars. I like to... Uh, there was a time my mom was fixing her car. I was there for like two weeks because she wanted to change a major thing. Could you look at me and say, oh, this boy is obedient? No, I wanted to drive her car. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because when you repair the car, somehow the key will be with you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will reverse it and pack it well and wash it. You say, no, no, no. This boy is a good boy. I knew my heart. <laughs> so while I was watching, I warmed the car. My, I started driving at age 12. So my contemporaries would see me in my mom's car. My God. I was tall, but, you know. When I started driving, I, I couldn't see the end of the bonnet. <laughs> I just loved cars. Ah! Stories we told to our friends. I have some people that went to school with me here. Stories we told. Oh, when they said we had to come to school on Saturday. Oh my God. I loved it. Why? Because you could tell your mom, now the driver will be... Uh, it doesn't work on weekend and you, you could take the car to school. They allowed students, oh my God. You would think I liked book. For where? <laughs> so when you saw that, you could say, oh, he's a good student. But I knew my heart. I just wanted to drive. Are you following what I'm saying? When they sent the driver on an errand, I wanted to follow the driver because I could talk to the driver when we got to the road. Hey, bring the car. <laughs> and you say, Mark, they are 60. Don't, don't, don't go beyond 60. <laughs> then I, I, will, I will say, no, no. I promise you, I won't go beyond 60. But as time went on, I will go to 80. He will say, hey! I will say, wait, wait, what? What? I also will report you what you did last week. Done. When I came home, you know, they would think, oh, he likes to, he likes to manage the driver. I just wanted to drive. So we have a lot of people that just like to be in charge. They don't love God. They just want to control people. And they receive ministry. And they are fasting and praying. Lord, I want power. God knows if they have power, they will control people. Now think about it. What you are praying about right now, is it because you want the kingdom to advance or you want it for self and harassment? Think about it. Obedience. 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 Whenever you say, should he, imagine, should he be sending someone like me? Right. 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 And I found out that that pride is in you because you need an amount of pride even to live a sinless life. Say, so me? Never. No, I won't do it. You need pride. But when you think more highly than you ought to, problem. Problem. In Hebrews 12, verse 1, Hebrews 12, verse 1, you see how you will learn to follow God. What you are commanding people to do, can they do it for you? Do you want, to be, do you want that thing to be done to you? Then we can say you're walking in line with God's will. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
And the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with patience. Patience in spiritual terms does not mean suru. Chere. No. It means endurance. Being consistent. That's why the Bible says be instant in season and out of season. When you lost a relationship, I'm tired, I'm not even talking to God again. You're not running with endurance. You're not consistent. Because of what has happened right now, you're not talking to God. That can happen for a while. But don't let the sun set on that thing you're about to do. Let's run the race that is set before us. Remember, you didn't set it. Someone set it before you. These are secrets for success. So when I just started pastoring, that was what I wanted to tell you before I started talking about the Prince and the Swiss Sensation experience. I said, Lord Jesus, just tell me three things I need to do to be successful. Three things. Three, those three things I need to do. Focus on. And God was gracious to tell me, you don't need three things, you need one thing. Paul says, one thing I do. What is the one thing? Obedience. Try it. That area that you are successful, not the one you manipulated people, in God, you're obedient in that aspect. Think about it. Just rewind in the service. Maybe you pray. When you pray, you will see the reward of those who pray. Some don't pray. Some are givers. You like to help people. That's why you get results in that aspect. Okay? So, in verse 2 of Hebrews 12, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, they just suddenly switch to talking about Jesus. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, in obedience, there was shame. There was endurance in obedience. And I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. They spat at him. They put crowns upon him. They, they make crowns of thorns. <laughs> what did he call himself? King of Jews? They put the crown of thorns on his head. Blood was coming out. They said, all oh, hail the king of Jews. And he could, he's the king of the world. He's the master of the world. But he had to go through to the Sharon. Dump. He didn't utter a word. Pontius Pilate pulled him to the room and said, please say something, say something. Give me something to free you. Pontius Pilate brought Barabbas, a renowned criminal. Oh, he was so sure that the Jewish people would choose Jesus. I said, ah, <laughs> Pontius Pilate, if you compare Jesus Christ with Barabbas, Barabbas was a thief, he killed people. It was their independence day. So they wanted to grant someone amnesty. And they started shouting, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. They took Barabbas out and took Jesus in. Doctrine of substitution. Bar means son of. Abba means father. Son of the father. If you read John 3.38, you'll see that Adam was a son of God. He sinned from the beginning. He was in prison. Left half dead. They released the son of the father. And took Jesus in. And they said, really, it's Barabbas, 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 Barabbas. Jesus Christ did not utter a word because if he spoke, there would have been faith. Creation would have leaped into being. Things would have happened. But he didn't see anything. Am I talking? Consider him who endured such hostility against himself. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. So we ought to follow Jesus Christ and do what he does. Disobedience and pride, they are twin brothers. 
disobedience and pride. In fact, disobedience is a manifestation of pride. Wanting to do what you want. No, me, 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 me. It's the spirit of the end time. You can't get much out of God. If God cannot tell you, he told Peter, follow me, I will make you. God cannot make you if you're not the type that can follow God. Oh, Pastor Bino, I follow God. You only do what is convenient, what pays you. One lady came to me crying. And I met him in church. I met him. I said, what did he do to you? Then she mentioned it. I said, wow. What about this? He did it. What about this? He did it. I said, oh, Mary. <laughs> did the Bible teach this? He said, no. Why did you do it? Did the Bible teach this? Why are you crying? You cost it. He could say bye-bye to you. You'll cry for two days. And finish. And clear your eyes. But you've done things you're not supposed to have done. So, who do we blame now? You, the devil, <laughs> or the guy? Think about death. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Convince me. And I, see, I'm very obedient to, but it also makes sense to me. Pride. Pride. Disobedience is a rebellious spirit. Submission increases your authority. As a father, as a mother, as a boss, as someone in a career, you want your authority to be increased. You want God's end to be mighty upon you. Be a submitted person to God. In Matthew 8, verse 8, I know you know the story, but let me just quickly read it to you. I have a lot to still say. There was a man, he was a centurion of the Italian regiment. In other words, the Roman government colonized the Jewish people. So in every colony, they posted a Roman person there. But when this guy got there, he was listening to them praying to God, preaching. And he said, they're calling the true God even though his fathers worship demigods. And he built a temple for them. So Jewish people liked him. They were always transferring people, but at his own time, they had time to worship their God. He gave them a soft landing, even though he was a friend to Caesar. He would warn them, no, no, don't do this. But you know I like you guys. But his servant, his peer was ill. And he liked the peer. So he told Jesus to come. In fact, the Jewish people that their law says no Jews should go to the house of the Gentiles. They were the one that said, Jesus, forget about the rule. Go and pray for this one. <laughs> this one, ah, he loved us. And Jesus was like, hmm, are you trying to set me up? And he said, okay, I will come. And the centurion heard and said, no. In verse 8, Matthew 8, the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy because I've listened to the message that God chose you people. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Really, 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 the bloggers were talking about Jesus. He was on the front page of the newspapers. So the centurion knew if he came to his house, the bloggers will tweet about it. And they will add his name and see them be here. So he said, no, you don't need to come, Jesus. Just speak for where you are. I don't want trouble. But he explains something. What the Lord told him. What the interpretation of what he believed in. He said, only speak a word. And my servant will be healed. Abba. What? And he says something in verse 9. Are you, are you watching this narrative? He said, for I am a man under authority. I thought he would say, I'm a man of authority. No, I'm a man under authority. Because I'm under authority, I also have authority. I'm under Caesar. So anybody that disobeys me, they are not disobeying me, they are disobeying Caesar. Because I am subjected to Caesar. If I rebel against Caesar, if they disobey me, it ends with me. Come and talk to me. So when you become obedient to God, 
I'm telling you, you don't know that you are stirring up authority. You are sick or you are a father submitted to God. I'm telling you, that sickness will not kill you. Why? You are a man under authority. You don't even know what people do when they're sick. When they see death, when they prophesy to you, you're going to die. You don't know what people do. People, are big, they become desperate. They can do anything. A man had a dangerous testimony here. When we were at Metro Plaza. Dangerous testimony. I won't tell you because one way or the other, if I, if I share the testimony, you may know who the man is. The wife came to me one day and said, my husband, I'm not only praying for him to come to this church, I'm praying for him not to go to hell. He has gone to join cults. I said, what? How? You don't even know what people do. The wife told me, I don't know whether, but she must have seen some things before she made that conclusion. Because your spouse will know you. <laughs> I'm a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, he has to go. I say to that one, come, he has to come. To my servant, do this. He does it. Verse 10, Jesus heard it. He marveled. How does this man know how it works? This is how it works. See what he said. He turned to those who followed him. He said, surely, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. He called it faith. That understanding came out of believing God. Not even among the born again Christians. I've not seen it. This man, the Bible says in verse 11, the very hour that understanding made the servant yield immediately. You don't even know what you do to yourself when you refuse to be under a covering. You just want to do your thing. Some people say, hey, don't, don't pray early in the money because let people talk to their God. Uh, you're like, it's like saying, I'm beyond Adams. I'm, I came from Adam. <laughs> I don't have a family. You see dysfunctional children all over the place because they didn't grow up with a father, a, a small family. What are you saying? What are you saying? Some people don't know some things. The Holy Ghost is invisible. It gives some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, some to be... He, he put you, he put the solitary in a family. But you, you want to exempt yourself. Okay, go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. So you are in this church on your own terms. You're serving God on your terms. If you're a CEO, listen to me. Let nobody walk with you on the attempt. If you are listening to me, you are CEO, let nobody, because God didn't talk to them, he talked to you. Write down the vision, make it plain, so that he that reads may run. That doesn't mean you won't listen to advice. That doesn't mean you won't hold your board meeting. Jesus Christ asks question, he himself, knowing what to do. smart. Listen to me. There's no leader that God can do much with. They are not strong. If you're a visionary, listen to me. Don't be afraid for anybody to live. Okay? But be fair. I will read some things to you today. I'm out of time, but I will wait till I read some things to you. Are you alive? Be bold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I've never seen the same hour. The seven. Jesus just said, go your way. And as you have believed, just that mentality, phew, it was done. The same hour. Does that not sound like that testimony you heard about that lady? The same hour. The mom just came out. Standing. My God. That bless me. If you are listening to me, take that step. You are not walking in faith if you are not walking in obedience. Faith is obedience. 
Faith is obedience. Know what you want. Know what you feel. Not the way you are raised. Sarah, Sarah, you know what God told me yesterday? Say that with her. Say, you want to kill me? Which God? Which God safe? Forgetting that God told her by this time next year, according to the time of life, you shall be found with a child. Sarah laughed, but now she's carrying the child. Do you know what my eyes saw when Agar was here? Where was that God that told you to sacrifice Isaac? Now, God told him, burn Isaac, not meat, not bring something, burn everything. But what did Abraham say? Young men stay here, no temptation. The young men, they obeyed fast, fast. Why? They've seen the knife, they've seen the rope, they've seen the fire, no sacrifice. Definitely no Isaac. One of us must be the sacrifice. I can imagine oneself and pushing one person before them. Be in front. Uh uh. She be all dark by you. You are the oldest one now. Be in front. <laughs> when Abraham told them, stay! Hey! They were glad to stay. Could you call that obedience? Never. Obedience is not what you wanted to do. Bible scholars believe Isaac was 27 years. What did the father tell him? The father tied his hand and he didn't see anything. The father laid him. He even asked the father. The fire is there. The rope is there. The distance is there. Where is the, the, the Lord will provide? Faith. Faith. Go and read what Abraham told the young man. I will go to the yonder place and we will come back. And he knew he was going to kill Isaac. The Bible says he accounted in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, he accounted that God was able to raise Isaac from them. He knew he was going to kill him, but God was able to raise him from the dead. In the Old Testament, and you are saying you're walking by faith. You don't believe God can bring something back into your life. That's why you can't obey, because you're thinking, ah, if I let go of this, if God doesn't show up. That's the problem if God doesn't show up. I pray in the name of Jesus. The enemy has lost it concerning you. That amen is not correct. I said the enemy has lost it concerning you. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? A lot of people respond to things they think is correct. They feel, oh, no. I don't have time. I would have read to you John 21, verse 18. Jesus told Peter, Peter, you know, he had told him, love is me more than this. Feed my lamb. Do this. He said, most assuredly, in verse 18, John 21, I say to you, when you were younger, <laughs> when you were younger in the spirit, you guarded yourself where you wanted to go. You went where you wanted to go. But when you are old in the spirit, you will stretch out your hands. And another way, God, they will carry you to where you don't wish to go. That's obedience. <laughs> That's obedience. Will Abraham like to kill Isaac that he waited for for years to have? In whom the promise is he lay hold on. God says, so shall your seed be. In this seed, I will bless you. I will bless the whole earth. In this seed. And God said, kill him. That's not what he wanted to do. That's not what he wanted to do. That's not what his flesh would have wanted to do. Child of God, I'm telling you, there are dimensions you will enter when you lay your life down and say, Lord, take it. That's why sometimes I'm telling you, stubbornness is like witchcraft. Don't be stubborn. Now, let me close with this because of time. Imagine Jesus Christ walked down the aisle of this church. His hair as white as wool, his clothes shiny, and he points at you and says, Daughter, come. To stand up from your seat to not be a big deal. And he tells you, 
Take the second microphone. As I speak into your ear, prophesy and let Pastor Beard interpret. Oh my God. You get up the stage, you won't even walk you around. Boldness will come. I said, thus hear the Lord. And I, you watch me interpret and, oh, you feel good. Say, Lord Jesus, let's build a tabernacle here. Or God tells you, give your car, walk home, oh, gladly. Or stay at the altar and pray all night, gladly. You will say to your friends, I saw Jesus. He told me to pray. Very easy to obey the Lord directly. But if somebody says, somebody said. Somebody said. Very hard. Very hard. Seven days of glory. I have us out. I have us out. I will fast till one and <laughs> because Jesus didn't appear to say, Son, you shall fast for seven days. Oh, I'm preaching more than you're responding to me. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. 1 Peter 2, 18. Servants, be submissive to your masters. Now, in those days, people bought slaves. Now, they are both Christians. Slaves are speaking in tongues. Masters are speaking in tongues. So how do you, how do you, okay, will you say because I'm born again now, uh, my money should go into voice, man. So Peter wrote about how to deal with things. Servant, be submissive to your masters with all fear. Don't say you're born again. Don't say because you carry Christ, they carry Christ. With all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, even to those, despite their being born again, they are ash. Now, you're not a slave. But you say, well, you know, my boss is, is a Muslim. So what? Bible says no authority exists outside God. If you don't believe in his religion, then leave his job. Leave his job. God is marking your scripts. That test of Saul and David was a test for David. God already rejected Saul. He went to the witch in Endor. He was already possessed with demons. It was a test for David. In fact, the person that went to David and lied that, oh, I killed Saul. David said that you kill him. But well, you're not afraid to touch the Lord's anointed. <laughs> Meanwhile, Saul died though. The guy wanted to impress David. I said, I killed him. He said, go and kill him. He said, he killed him. Well, you're not afraid. He saw Saul one day, he was sleeping. The, the bodyguard was sleeping. He took the sword. He said, my father, this is your sword. When he scolded the bodyguard. What were you doing that I, I walked towards you and I took? That day Saul cried. So when God started saying that David is a man at his own heart, he passed that test. May you pass that test. Amen. May God elevate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Any small thing, you rebel. No. You remind God of the devil. God can never, never support rebellion. No matter what. It's a, it's a display of pride. You may not believe me, but when you get home, pray about it. Ask God, did that pastor preach the truth? What I'm preaching to you is not what young men preach right now. I am telling you what will take you high. Don't only submit to those who are gentle, who are good, those who are harsh. Remember verse 19 to 22. Bible says, for this is commendable. If because of good conscience towards God, one endures grief and suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if when you are beaten, you are beaten for your fault? Read the rest at home. Titus chapter 2. I want to read from verse 9 to 10 because of time. Exalt like admonish one servant 
To be what? Obedient to their own masters. To be well pleasing in all things, not answering back. Sometimes they say, you are a fool. Just keep quiet. Say, Lord, did you hear what they said? God tells you, stay there. Let me tell you a story. I need to close a matter of time. There's a guy that had two friends. So he was a third person. Let's name the first guy Mr. A. Let's name the second guy Mr. C. So he's Mr. B. He noticed that when Mr. A and B himself were together, they were cool. But when Mr. A saw Mr. C and they began to talk against him, Mr. A would just change instantly. And he was like, what will I do? This Mr. C, and whenever he sees Mr. A, he's a bad influence. What will I do? And one day, the Holy Ghost told him, deep call it unto deep. Even though you're not seeing anything, there is a lot on your inside. The next time, they both say things against you, let your heart be free. And he did it. And the two of them were just crying. You know, all these days we've been wrongfully relating with you. We're sorry. And God told him, the moment there was nothing to connect with on your inside, suddenly their eyes opened. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, and I'm telling you. Satan came to Jesus and found nothing in him. I pray in the name of Jesus. Today will be the first year of the rest of your life. Every single day you're walking towards the fact that Satan will come to you and find nothing in you. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Let me close by reading two scriptures to you. Hebrews 5 and verse 8. Although Jesus was a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And verse 9 is where I'm going. The Bible says, having been perfected, it became the beginning of salvation to all who will be. All who will be. Today, I believe strongly, as you make up your mind that you don't live for yourself anymore, you will do what it tells you to do. That in the name of Jesus, every ladder the enemy has used to enter your life, enter your marriage, enter your career, is out of your life in the name of Jesus. In Joel 2.26, which is going to be my last scripture, Joel 2.26, I prophesy to you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. I say you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God in the name of Jesus. The Lord who has dealt wondrously with you and God's people shall never be put to shame. You shall never be put to shame. God will help you. I prophesy to you. May your obedience pave way for you. In the name of Jesus. All that it tells you. Not that you are waiting and saying, Lord, is there anything? The Bible talks about presumptuous sin. Don't be sin conscious. But whatever he puts his finger on, let it go. I pray in the name of Jesus that God's will will be done in your life. People will look at you and know that you are a king's kid. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will not suffer again. Amen. You will not suffer again. Amen. You will not suffer again. Amen. God will help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I'm the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you the way you should go. The way you should go about that thing is the way you will go. Amen. Every shot caught of the enemy in the name of is caught off your life. God will help you. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. And also three people say victory all the way. Victory. Victory. Today, victory has started in your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We've not given anybody any specific instruction. We know that we have the Bible, which is a general instruction. But there are specific things you want your sons and your daughters to do. I pray in the name of Jesus. As they do it, let something end in their lives. Let your will start in their lives. 
Let everybody know that they're serving a living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a mighty, 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 mighty. Is that what you're going to give to the Lord? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, something has happened to me. You will notice the next service that something has happened to me.